from the CBS Broadcast Center in Los Angeles. This is CBS 2 News at 5 p.m. Breaking news, a suspected hit-and-run driver is now behind bars, caught and arrested days after a 14-year-old girl was struck and killed in San Bernardino. Jade Maldonado was in a crosswalk headed to Pacific High School when a woman driving an SUV ran her down. Full well, CBS2 Inland Empire reporter Tina Patel is live in San Bernardino with more on this story. Tina. Well, I spoke to a family member of this young girl who says they just heard about the arrest a few hours ago. They're still processing the news, but they want to know more about this woman arrested and how she could do something like this. 14 year old Jade Maldonado was struck and killed right in front of Ruby Gutierrez's house. Although the two girls didn't know each other well, Ruby says the crash has had an impact on her. It made me anxious. Like, and now I, I, I kind of don't feel safe when I cross the street because it's really scary. Jade was in the crosswalk on her way to school when she was hit. Witnesses told CHP investigators that the driver was in an older tan SUV and they were able to find this security video of a Chevy Suburban in the area. They say they've been searching for other security cameras over the last week and a half. The investigators were able to follow up through just video feed um, that ultimately got them a, a, a proximity of where the vehicle may be and then just relentless work on, on behalf of our officers of, of not giving up on that car. Investigators say the driver had tried to hide the SUV, which did have some front end damage. This morning they tracked it down and then tracked down and arrested 55 year old Charlene LaRue Welch, who lives just a few blocks from the crash site. This is especially big for the family to help in the in the closure process. Um, our investigators worked so hard because they knew um, Jade's family really wanted to see justice. Neighbors are relieved and hope the driver will face serious charges for what she did. She needs justice. She needs time in jail for what she did to Jade because it's really sad and especially for her parents too. Welch is currently being held at the West Valley Detention Center. She's scheduled to be in court on Wednesday. Live in San Bernardino, Tina Patel, CBS 2 News. The company that owns the limo behind the country's deadliest transportation accident in nearly a decade has been ordered to shut down. 20 people, including four sisters, died when the vehicle going down a hill near Albany, New York, failed to stop at a stop sign. It barreled into a store parking lot and an empty SUV. And we've learned the limo driver who was killed was not properly seated. New York's governor also revealed this. This vehicle was inspected just last month and it failed inspection. 18 people in the limo died as well as two people on the street. A memorial service is taking place this evening. What happened in New York is making some wonder if it could happen here. Yes, with big events such as homecoming coming up, it may be time to triple check your limo rentals. CBS 2 Orange County reporter Michelle Gili is live in Santa Ana with ways to protect herself. Michelle. That's right. The owner of Best VIP says his fleet, which is behind me here, is checked every 45 days by the California Highway Patrol. That's California law. And it is also regulated by the Department of Transportation and the Public Utilities Commission. Yet this company still recommends to its customers that they take matters into their own hands and check the inspection records themselves. This uh, 35 passenger coach. As you can see, it has seat belts at every seat, and just about every other row has an emergency exit. It's the law in California, and it's something anyone running a bus, limousine, or SUV should look for, transportation officials say. If you could please walk us through what a pre- and post-trip inspection looks like on one of these vehicles. Todd Salaji is co-owner of Best VIP Chauffeured Worldwide, which has the largest fleet in Orange County. He recommends that passengers look at maintenance and inspection records, along with proof of drivers' commercial licenses before climbing inside. My recommendation would be a vehicle that, depending on the number of passengers that you have, but you want a vehicle that was originally intended for the number of people that you want to put in it. You don't want to try and put 20 people in a vehicle that was originally built for four. The SUV involved in the New York crash was a Ford Expedition that had been converted into a limo and it had failed an inspection. Todd Salaji says if you're hiring a car that has been stretched, ask for the records on the customization. Car manufacturers have detailed safety specifications that not every company is qualified to perform. Anybody could be building those cars, and if they're not properly checked, 
they could have inadequate brakes. If you make the vehicle twice as long as it once was, it wasn't engineered to stop if it doesn't have uh, adequate braking. There's all kinds of different systems within the vehicle that need to be modified along with the vehicle itself. Back live now, you're looking at one of these buses here, and you see the second number from the bottom is a TCP number. Uh, each and every sh uh, chauffeured bus or limousine should have a TCP number. I'm told, and I found this out today, that you can run that number online and get the individual vehicle's inspection record yourself. That's the latest live in Santa Ana. I'm Michelle Geely. Back to you. Thanks, Michelle. Good information there. And there will be much more on the New York limo crash and the issue of limo safety coming up at 6.30 on the CBS Evening News with Jeff Glor. Now to the weather, and severe weather is threatening both the west and the east coast. That's right. Our Garth Kep is tracking the hurricane conditions. Garth. Yeah, everybody, good afternoon to you. Let's get you out and show you what's happening. Let me get you to my satellite shot. We'll take you down first towards the theater of the Gulf of, uh, Gulf of California, or Gulf of Mexico, excuse me, there's what we're talking about. Center of Michael right now, 85 mile an hour winds maximum sustained. So it's a Cat 1 hurricane. It's drifted across. It's about 60 miles north, north, uh, west right now of the uh, westernmost edge of Cuba. Doesn't get much shearing. Gets a little bit of it across the Cuba. They've got a lot of mountainous terrain on the island. But right now it still is about 60 miles north, north, west of there. About 485 miles from Ach uh, Apple. Apalachicola, Florida, which is up in the panhandle of Florida, excuse me. And that goes from Panama City all the way down just north of Tampa and then over towards Tallahassee. This is the path we're watching for this. It's going to continue to make a path up to the north, make a swing back to the east a little bit. We anticipate as it starts to get back into the Gulf waters, which are around 85 to 86 degrees, warm up. Warmer water start to feed it. It'll become a Cat 2, Cat 3. I'm looking right now as possibly a Cat 2 hurricane. For the uh, western uh, areas in the Pacific Theater, you can see there's Sergio, not a threat to us at all. It'll become a tropical storm as it heads towards the Sea of uh, Cortez, the Gulf of California. But it will start to generate some surf. So that's what's going on in the theaters of hurricane, late season hurricanes happening. We'll talk more about our weather coming up in a little bit. Back to you guys. All right. Thanks, Garth. Well, we can call this divine intervention. A group of nuns are on a midterm mission. They're going across the country to get out the vote. CBS 2's Jasmine Veal is live in downtown L.A. to tell us just how they got a little help from House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi. Jasmine. Yeah, and Pat, we actually talked to Nancy Pelosi about the Kavanaugh battle that's been taking place on Capitol Hill as well. But the nuns on the bus, this is a Catholic advocacy group. They left here a short time ago. They were checking out the youth program here at Homeboy Industries, and they're going to be visiting 21 states over the next 27 days with a strong message. Welcome to the very First event. With the election looming, a bus full of nuns is hitting the road. First stop, Santa Monica. That's where supporters were waiting. I'm here to support the nuns because they actually started with the health care debate. What's happening with the taxes is deplorable. I mean, the rich are benefiting, not the poor. Some Democratic lawmakers up for re election joined the group of 30 Catholic sisters who are traveling to 21 states and holding 54 events lobbying for economic and social change. Everything is at stake. They are protesting President Trump's tax reform plan enacted late last year and rallying behind the Affordable Care Act. But the battle over Brett Kavanaugh's Supreme Court confirmation also couldn't be ignored. When former Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi was asked if Democrats would consider impeachment proceedings against Kavanaugh, she says that's not her focus right now. We have to move on. We have to go to winning this election so that we can act for the people. Sister Simone Campbell, who's leading the group of nuns, says it's never been a more important time for women to speak out. To say this last week was extremely difficult for women in our nation, regardless of party, the very fact that everyone knows at least one person, and I know a number of people that have been abused. It's a tour that will take this group of nuns through a deeply divided country and right into a critical midterm election. So right now, nuns on the bus. They're wrapping up a town hall meeting in Pasadena, and then they're going to head out across the country. Uh, and with that said, they're going to end, like I mentioned, in 27 days, right outside President Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort with what they say will be a fiesta for everyone. Back to you. All right, thanks for that. So help me God. So help me God.
The 114th Supreme Court Justice is sworn in for the second time. Surrounded by his family and President Trump, Brett Kavanaugh took the oath of office in a ceremonial gathering at the White House just about an hour ago. He will take his seat on the high court tomorrow following a bitter confirmation fight. Today, he thanked President Trump and those who stuck by him despite the accusations of sexual misconduct. Kavanaugh also discussed how he's already made an impact. Inspired by my mom, who was a trailblazer for women in the law, I've worked hard throughout my career to promote the advancement of women. I'm proud that all four of my newly hired law clerks at the Supreme Court are women, a first in the history of the Supreme Court. Kavanaugh also said the Supreme Court is not a partisan or political institution. He promised to always be a team player on a team of nine. Now the embattled deputy U.S. attorney general still has a job for now. Rod Rosenstein and President Trump talked during a flight to Orlando, Florida this morning. White House officials didn't reveal what was talked about, but before the trip, Mr. Trump said he had no intention of firing Rosenstein. The deputy AG has been in the line of fire since the New York Times reported he suggested wearing a wire to record the president. He also reportedly tried to recruit cabinet members to remove Trump from office. Rosenstein has denied the report. The only debate between the two men who want to be California's next governor took place today. Yes, there were no TV cameras or lights, but there was a lot of fireworks. Republican John Cox sparred with Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom this morning in a radio debate in San Francisco. Inside the Q KQED studio, the candidates clashed over hot button topics such as California's sanctuary law, climate change, and affordable housing. But one of the biggest issues, which is also on the November ballot, is Prop 6, the push to repeal the most recent gas tax. The politicians, uh, like Gavin, uh, went ahead and uh, approved an increase in the gas tax. They didn't want to do the tough job. The tough job would have been making Caltrans uh, live within its means. He's talking about taking away over $5 billion every single year for road improvements, public safety improvements, addressing the issue of traffic and congestion, which in and of itself is a hidden tax. Coming up in our second half hour, we're going to take a closer look at Prop 6 and the gas tax debate. Supporters, including John Cox, hope it will drive a lot of Republicans to the polls. Well, Democrats say trying to overturn the gas tax to take away all that money from road repairs is playing politics with our safety. Coming up next at 5, he was happy and healthy. So how did a mosquito bite lead to the death of a lo local lawyer and a father? You'll hear from the victim's husband in minutes. Hand sanitizer or hand washing, which one will keep your kids safer? The new report is ahead. Hey, everybody. Wow, look at that shot out by the beach. We're going to start to pick the surf up. Plus, just great October weather forecast on the way.